Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. We are back in Imagimorphia today to carry on with our nameplate page and we are going on to our next set of colours which are going to be purples. So just a quick recap of the blues, again this is just in case we need to do a little bit of blending where these two sets of colours are going to meet. So far I haven't had to do it much which is great but it's always handy just to have them just in case. So very quickly, we have Cerulean Blue, which is PC103, True Blue, PC903, Violet Blue, PC933, there's lots of threes here, doesn't there? And finally, the Cobalt Blue Hue, which is PC133. Moving on to our Violet Stroke purple colours. Again, I've been quite careful in picking these out. What I wanted to achieve was a balance of more bluish type purples because that's going to help us sort of blend this in and get this nice sort of gradual gradient. But also I wanted to pink, pick, <laughs> pick more pinky based ones. I cannot speak this morning, it's too early. I wanted to pick some more pinky based ones because in these corners we are going to be going into pink. So I have selected Lavender, which is PC934. Dahlia, or Dahlia, I think it's Dahlia Purple, which is PC1009. Parma Violet, PC1008. And finally, Imperial Violet, which is PC1007. Once again, I am not doing anything differently. I am just using the exact same technique as I did before. So we'll get zoomed in a little bit, move this over so that we can see what we're doing. And I'm just going to start here like I did last time with my four pencils and we can get a, a shimmy on and see how we go. I do think that using this palest colour, which is the lavender, I am going to do have, have to do a little bit of blending, um, but that's okay. We can take it as it comes. As I say, this is one of the beauties of doing something like this, is you just work a little section at a time. Don't panic yourself about oh, is, is this going to blend? Is it going to look okay? You just do it one tiny, tiny piece at a time. And just make sure that you are picking out your colours carefully and everything will be a-okay. Everything will be absolutely grand. So there we go. That's I, like. I really like this colour. Which one is this? The Parma Violet. I think it's a lovely shade of purple. I'm not big on the colour purple. Um... I seem to use it quite a lot in my videos though. I was looking through some of the other colour alongs that I've done and it purple, it does seem to be a colour that I use quite a lot, which I find quite strange. Just because it says, it's not, I wouldn't put it up there in my, you know, my, my sort of a favourite colours kind of thing, which is kind of weird. But I suppose it's kind of cool at the same time. So let's pop this in behind here. And you can see this one here is much more sort of pink based rather than you know, it leans more towards pink than than blue, which is nice. And these sets of purples, because I've done, you know, what I've done, explained what, why I've done it, they don't necessarily have to go together as a set. And obviously they're not going to do other than the fact that they all share being purple. <laughs> being purple. But... Um, yeah, it just it, I just think this is a really fun way to colour a page. And quite a lot of people have said it's something that they'll use, perhaps not on this nameplate page, but they, you know, they will use it elsewhere, which is awesome. That's really, really good to hear. I wanted, you know, I like doing things that are accessible to people and gives everybody the opportunity to to go ahead and do things that they maybe wouldn't normally tackle because maybe they feel a little bit overwhelmed by it or whatever. And I can completely understand that in Kirby's pages because there is a lot going on. A lot, a lot, a lot going on. There we go. It's actually really nice to be sitting in, in the cave this morning doing this. It is early morning. Again, it's just a good slot for me to to do something like this because when it comes to the chatorial or colour along type pages they don't require a huge amount of editing so it's quite a although the videos themselves are long it doesn't actually take me that long to put them together and I've just got enough time in the mornings just now to to do this so it's it's quite handy <laughs> yeah those colours look quite nice together so far so good <laughs> there's quite a lot of uh, bittiness going on around here and it's quite hard to 
sort of figure out what belongs to what and you know sometimes what things are sort of trying to identify them but I do find that if that's the case if I just colour one little section it can quite often bring out the the line work a bit better and I can understand better what you know what something is that's maybe in behind like in here that's obviously another leaf in there similar to these ones so sometimes just colouring a wee section like this is really helpful just so you can figure out what's going on The weather is absolutely terrible here today. We are now into making silage and silage is fermented grass. And basically what you do is, for the, for the uninitiated, you have a field with your grass in it and you let it grow quite long. So if you were to walk through it, it would quite possibly be, well, especially if you're my height, it would be up, like almost up to your knees. And then what we do is we take in great big lawnmowers that attach to the back of the tractors and we cut it all. And then we bale it. So when you bale it, it just gets rolled up and we use uh, what we call big round bales. So they're, you know, they're, that's the sort of cylindrical shaped ones. And we basically bale up all the grass. So um, it's in these round bales and then it gets it gets wrapped in plastic and what that does is it makes it airtight and then you let it sit and it starts to ferment because it is airtight and that fermented grass is an excellent feed for the cows and we use them in the winter so when they can't graze out in the grass number one because the grass isn't growing and number two because the weather's too horrendous for them to be outside then you can cut these bales open and unwrap them and you can feed them to your cows. So silage is like a really, really important part of our, of our sort of yearly cycle on the farm. But you need, the grass needs to be quite dry and it needs to be, you know, the, the actual ground itself needs to be dry so that we can get tractors and things in to do it. If you wrap a wet silage bale lots of mold grows in it and obviously we can't feed that to the cows so the moisture level needs to be quite low not as low for straw I mean, straw is really really dry obviously but you're not you're not wanting to ferment that so there, there's it's like a delicate balance of the right amount of moisture but when it's been raining uh, that's just an absolute no so basically in Scotland because the weather is so unpredictable you just have to pick a window where you've got maybe a few dry days in a row and you just have to go for it because once the grass is cut you have a limited amount of time to be able to bale it and wrap it while it still has that sort of middling moisture level because if you leave it too long it starts to turn to hay so yeah it's uh, it's a it's a complete and utter like gamble and mr gem decided the other day that he was going to cut some silage and i said that it wasn't a good idea because the weather's really unsettled and lo and behold he he decided to cut one field and about an hour after he cut it the heavens opened so <laughs> we have bailed that one field and I'm not convinced I think it's going to be too wet personally so yeah we'll wait and see because the other thing is you don't really know until you cut one of your bales open, you know, once they've been sort of sitting, because you, you put them in big stacks like big pyramids, and you don't really know what the quality of them is going to be like until you cut them open, you know, cut the wrap off them. But when you do that, obviously, you are letting air in, so you have to use them once you've cut them open. So it's a bit, it's a bit like, a, like a surprise subscription box. You don't really know what's happening until you cut them open in the winter. Uh, but I think those ones are going to be, uh, they're going to be far too wet. I'm not really sure what's going on in behind here. Uh, this part, I think, belongs to this, so we'll do that. But I may come back to this. I can't decide whether this is sort of background parts, you know, like, like this kind of thing. Uh, this bit definitely is, but we'll go back to that in a little while. But I'm just not entirely sure about what's going on here. Mm, I think these sort of bumpy bits here, I think we'll just go in with a lilac. Lavender, sorry, not lilac. Come on, Jim. Yeah, so that's uh, the silage situation. So things are a bit kind of stressful just now because you just, 
not having any control over the weather it's very frustrating but it can cost you a lot of money because if you don't make enough silage bales to to feed your girls over the winter you're then going to incur other costs because you're going to have to buy in something else for them to eat which obviously that when when you have feedstuffs readily available at your disposal that is much more favorable than having to buy things in so it's um yeah it's a bit of a conundrum and see scotland just because the weather is so variable it's so unpredictable particularly at these sort of change of seasons you know spring into summer and also when you go from sort of autumn into winter you can get both ends of the spectrum you know, you, like in, in the autumn you can get really warm weather and we do the last few years we have had a lot a lot warmer weather a lot later like almost like an indian summer but by the same time you can get really wintry conditions as well so it's a bit of a pest <laughs> but we soldier on just the same i never thought i'd be coloring my t-rex in in lavender <laughs> first time for everything so i'm just taking that over into the blue a little bit because it is quite a pale color it's not going to impact the blue too much, but it's just helping me get a bit of a better transition here. I do like this T-Rex. I'm quite attached to him. <laughs> Stop there. So we're going to have that. Little... That's going to be nice going into that little pink corner there. That was a good choice. <laughs> I'll darken this in here. So yesterday, I mean, it rained all day yesterday. It didn't let up at all. It was just constant and it was heavy. It was it was horrible. I was at the point yesterday where I actually didn't take the dogs O-U-T for a W-A-L-K. I have all three of them in the cave today. <laughs> Got to be careful what I say. Uh, yeah, we just didn't make it. It was far, far, far too wet. So I'm hoping that later on today that it's going to dry up a little bit so that I can take them. Because I'm sure you can imagine uh, having two collies cooped up inside all day. It's, uh, it, it's not conducive to a calm environment. You know, they, they need to let off steam. But when we do that, if, if we do have, especially if we've got a run of really, really wet days um, where we can't really go. I Once I've finished my work in the afternoons, I have a set of sort of like puzzle toys that I bring out for them and I sit with them. I move all the, the chairs from around the kitchen table and I open all the doors through the house and I sit and play with them on the floor and I bring out the puzzle toys and you put little treats and things in. Um, we've got Kong toys as well. Some of you have heard of them, these sort of robust rubber toys and they've got lots of nooks and crannies in them so that you can stuff treats in them and uh, it takes them a little while to, you know, to figure them out and actually work the treats out. So they're, things like that are really handy for occupying them. And by the time I've thrown a couple of tennis balls and they've battered about the house, you know, it kind of satisfies them a bit more. But you do need, they need stimulation, they really do. So stuff like this isn't helpful. But it is very rarely that I'll abandon that opportunity to exercise them. But see, yesterday was just horrendous. It's, uh, it's not quite as wet today, but it's still pretty bad. So we'll see how we go. I'm say if it's if it dries up even a little bit, I'll take them out later. And we can go into the triangle wood. I'll take them down there for a run about. Pip loves it in there. She just she just loves running about in there because there's lots of things to sniff. She's very nosy, she's very curious. So she really likes going in there. She can sniff all the rabbit holes and all that kind of stuff. So we'll see how she goes. Okay, this is part of our T Rex here as well, I think. So we'll get this. I'm just leaning a bit he more heavily on the parts that have been hatched, you know, these darker areas. Because again, that's Kirby indicating to us that, you know, that's meant to be a darker part. So making sure I'm filling that in. And my pencil line, I don't know if you can see this down here, but my pencil line it sort of comes round here. So that's where I'm going to stop. Let's pop that right down in there. It's pretty good. Yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. I was away the other day looking at a new truck. It's time for us to change our 
well, for me to change my vehicle, Mr. Gem's trucks, he's only had, he's not even had it a year yet, so, um, but it's time for me to change mine, and because we are, oh no, I want that the same colour, what am I doing, Gem, come on, um, because we are travelling, you know, we're driving to Mr. Gem's sister's wedding in a few weeks, we kind of wanted to change the car before, before we, we do that, so I've been away looking at trucks i have an suv just now uh which i hate i've not I, i've never liked the car from the day and hour we bought it but at the time we we weren't sure we because we were in the throes mr gem was looking for a, a new farm at that point and this is when we were staying in one of my parents rental properties it was like a stopgap property until Mr. Jem decided what he was doing work-wise. So we, at that time, the, the car that we had before was absolutely falling in bits and we were kind of forced into changing it. So we just picked a vehicle that was as new as we could afford, but was kind of like an all good round, you know, like an all rounder uh, sort of type thing. So yeah that was <laughs> we we did the best with the money that we had in the sort of unknown situation we were in but the vehicle itself is i just I, I hate it i absolutely hate it so when it came time to you know to start thinking about it i'm now like i can't wait to change this <laughs> and my main problem with it is the boot size these modern suvs they're meant to be these sort of mid-sized family cars and the boot space in them is tiny for the size of the vehicle and it's something that really annoys me because i have three dogs and they need to fit in the boot of a car and that we picked the car that we've got because it was it was the one with the largest boot space and again and you know within our budget and having the the three dogs in the back of it is, is a squeeze, it's tight. So the decision was made that I am I'm getting a truck, which it's kind of, again, back to the weather. I always end up talking about the bloody weather. The, because the weather conditions are getting more adverse, being on a farm as well, you don't want to be stuck. Some of you will remember the beast from the east, which was horrendous. And I was snowed in for four days. I could not go anywhere. So I'm just going to grab the cerulean blue here because I've got quite a sort of harsh line across there. And I just want to blend this out a bit. Um, so it, for practicality's sake, it does make more sense. It's very impractical having a truck when you have to do day-to-day -day business in the town, like going to a supermarket. The spaces are not designed for pickup trucks, they're really not. Um, so there's kind of that that side of it as well, but I'm willing to forego that because, uh, you know, the other situations greatly outweigh that and, you know, I'll get used to it, it's fine. So we haven't found the right one yet and I kind of want to get the same truck as Mr. Gems because I like driving his truck as well as far as pickups go I like driving it um so we were kind of looking for one of them but we haven't found the right one yet so we're still looking but um the only thing about them is that they are absolute fuel munchers I mean they're they're terrible on fuel uh compared to some of the other the other options that are available but again our our vehicle just now is absolutely awful on fuel it's terrible on fuel so we're not really going to notice too much of a difference and it's the other thing as well is having a truck it's much better for towing things um we the our car just now is quite good for towing and I, thankfully i don't have to do it very often but there are times where it's just really helpful to have that option you know for farming things one of the, the things that happens quite a lot in our, our neck of the woods is people get stuck. Again, just because uh, quite a lot of the year it's quite wet and being in a farming community, we, you know, we will always help out our neighbours or whatever. But sometimes if someone gets stuck, having that ability to go and pull them out because you have a toolbar and you've got the, the sort of grunt to do it, you're going to go and help your neighbours out. So things like that it's quite helpful for that as well and maybe the odd time if we have to move 
livestock and it's maybe only one or two. Um, if we're moving a lot of animals, then Mr. Gem takes a tractor with like a big trailer on it, which I don't drive. I'm I'm not into that. Um, but if it's just like maybe a handful of calves or whatever, it's great to to throw on the little the little trailer, the little covered over trailer, and just be able to move them about as well. So it's we've got that versatility with it. So anyway, that that's the plan. That's the thinking behind it. But as I say, we've just not found the right one yet. They are outrageously expensive outrageously expensive <laughs> but we will get there we will get there but see I'm, I'm just at the stage now where i can't wait to get rid of that car because i hate it i really hate it before the car that uh, that we've got just now i used to have an old battered audi a6 estate and uh, i absolutely loved that car she was an old one but a good one and that i uh, just it, it was such a pleasure to drive but again in the snow and things they're not great they're really not great at all but you could fit i mean like oh, i had I had like washing machines and all sorts in the back of that car because you, you can fold the seats down and the, the amount of boot space you've got is absolutely colossal <laughs> it's so good one year mr gem went and um because we, we cut down our own christmas trees right because they're they're on our on our farm and we just go and pick one out like oh we'll have that one and uh, Mr. Jim took the Audi one year and he came, he came back with a nine foot Christmas tree hanging out the back of this estate car. And for the most part, I mean, most of the tree did actually fit in the in the car, which was just hilarious. But when he pulled it out, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. It's like pulling a pipe cleaner out of a pipe. A pipe it just all kind of went poof. <laughs> and all I could see was this massive tree wobbling towards me and Mr. Jim staggering about with it. It was really funny. I did say to him though, I said, Dear, you do realise that you clearly have um, spatial awareness issues because we're not going to be able to fit that in the door of the house. <laughs> and he's going, that'll be fine, I'll get it in, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, good God. <laughs> it was a very, very funny. We ended up though, he had to give it a bit of a haircut, we had to chop a bit off the bottom. I was like, that was a bit ambitious, I think, for a, for a tree. It was a lovely tree though, don't get me wrong, <laughs> it just took up half of our lounge. Oh dear. That's funny. I've got a thing about that though. I um growing up for for a lot of my in my younger years we always had a, a a real Christmas tree. And it's something that, you know, obviously it kind of reminds me of my childhood and I love the smell. I love the Christmas smell that comes off a tree. So whenever it's been possible, I've always tried to have a a real tree and it's funny because the the dogs don't bother with it because we were kind of worried uh, this Christmas just passed uh because we had well Pip was just started she was a tiny puppy at that point and um she she kind of she was curious about it but the first few times we just said to her no you can't have that and she was she wasn't bothered by it she had a little snuffle underneath especially once there was presents under there but she actually didn't touch the tree after that and the other two Jock and Woo don't bother with it either so we've never had any problems that way but if it was something that was going to be an issue I would have an artificial tree obviously but um the, fir the first year that we had Jock was quite funny as well because he, get getting him as a slightly older dog, like he wasn't a puppy anymore when we got him. And I had to house train him because he'd been kenneled before that, you know, he'd been kept outside. And uh, we were getting on really well with the, the toilet training and when we brought the Christmas tree in it really confused him because he tried to lift his leg up against it. <laughs> and when I said to him no, he looked at me as if like... But why not? Why, why can I not do this? Because it's a tree and obviously that's being a boy dog. Uh, so th that confused him a little bit. And, but he just kind of, do you know that way? It's like if he was human, it was kind of like, why, why are you telling me not to do this? But okay, I'm not going to do it. All right, let's move on. <laughs> it was the expression on his face though when I told him no. It was so funny. Really, really funny. He's like, why, what, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> The only other accident we had with him, actually, he was actually really easy to house train, was one of the, the first times, you know, that he had spent any length of time in the house. And uh, I'd been out for a run and I dumped down, like, my sweaty running gear in front of the washing machine because there was, there was something in the machine and it was on. And he stood and sniffed it for about 15 minutes and then piddled all over the top of it. <laughs> and all I could do was laugh. I was just like... <laughs> oh okay fair enough you know like <laughs> point taken <laughs> it stinks i get it oh but that was quite funny as well 
So needless to say, after that, I made sure that my running gear was elsewhere and I'll leave it on the floor. Oh, goodness me. He's funny. Jock's very expressive as well, like just his, his little face, he's, uh, he's got a really expressive face. So when things like that happen, it's, it's really, really funny just to watch him. I often wonder what's going through his wee head right enough. But he's, uh, oh, that's gone into the pink bit. Here I go again, I'm getting confused here. I think my pencil, I can't actually see my pencil line here, so that's probably part of the problem. Nothing my Derwent Super Eraser won't fix. There we go. That's fine. See, I can see it here. It's really clear there. You can see it on the camera too. There's quite a lot going on in the background in here. This annoys me. I'm just going to give my little friend here some eyes. Just get my fine liners out again. Zero three, that'll do it. My little fishy friend. I thought that was an eyeball there, but it's it's part of part of the paw, so we don't need to worry about that. Yeah. So yeah, we're we're starting to get organised now for for going away. I am, I'm really far in front with filming videos. Um. Because really, what I wanted, I wanted to be far enough in front that. I don't have to film anything the week before we go because the, we have a lot of things to sort out on the farm and and whatnot as well before we go. It's not just a case of packing up and away we go. Um, so I wanted to have like the week before we leave clear so that I can kind of get my affairs in order, if you like. And that just gives me the, the opportunity as well to kind of chill out a bit. Um, so that'll be fine. Mama and Papa Jem are coming up to look after the dogs for us while we're away, which is great. They love it though. They're they're really they're really happy to do it. Especially my mum because she absolutely loves dogs and like she she would have she would have dogs of her own uh, if Papa Jem would let her. But Papa Jem's not really. He he struggles with um sort of keeping things clean and keeping things orderly and dog hair is one of those things or animal hair in general it just sends him stratospheric uh he can't he can't deal with it at all and when he comes to stay he has a separate set of clothes that he brings with him and it's so that the dogs can you know he can cuddle the dogs and pet them and he does not use those clothes for anything else because they, they, they get covered in hair and that's his way of kind of dealing with it when we lived in the the at the farm before this in fact no it was two farms ago he the room that we had as our spare room was kind of like a multi-purpose room and I used to have to hoover the bed and I mean I like you before the bed clothes were on I used to have to hoover the mattress to make sure that there was no hair on it before he came to stay because he couldn't sleep in a bed that you know where there'd been any dog hair near it so that was interesting but now the setup we've got now we have uh, we have a spare room upstairs and it's the only thing that's up the stairs and it's actually really good because when we have guests staying they've got their privacy you know there's nobody next door to them or there's no reason for anyone to go up the stairs other than to go into that room so and the the dogs aren't allowed up there full stop and they don't they don't go up there for any reason so that's really good because it means I don't have to hoover mattresses anymore so that, that works really well. We're really lucky with this house. It's, it's, it's a good house. I like it. So, yeah. Okay, I need to come back down here now. I don't really know what to do with this. This is the first time I've really been, like, properly stumped. Um, I might just take the darkest one. See, I have no idea what they are. They're just lines. They're not... They're like stripey. I think I'm just going to block colour these in at the back. In this section anyway. Yeah, we'll go with that. Right, let's move up and round here now a little bit. Oh, too far. <laughs> Got more of these lines. To have a little sharpen here as well. Yep, all the canines are sleeping this morning. 
everyone's asleep. Pip is coming into her first season, which is delightful. Um, Jock is entire, so we have to be incredibly careful with the two of them. We went through this before with our with our last collie mist. Um, we we weren't when we got her. We didn't know where she was in our cycle, and when you're going to neuter a female, you have to be very careful when you have it done, because if you do it when they are near a heat or a season, it can cause complications because of the you know the like the blood lining in the uterus and things. So that you when you have a dog spayed or neutered, you're supposed to wait until they're roughly halfway in their cycle. So when we got missed, we we wanted a litter of pups, which we we had, uh, and Jock, Jock was the daddy of those of those puppies, and then after that we had to wait until she was about halfway in her cycle. But we we let her have a heat before we we bred her and Jock because we wanted to make sure that everything was working okay, and that sort of idea. So we've been through this before with uh, with Jock and Mist and the reason that we haven't had Jock neutered is because he has a very timid nature, he's very shy and he's a very soft dog and I think if we took his, took his bits and pieces away we don't know how it would affect him, you know, affect his temperament because people do say, and I've seen it myself, that if you neuter a male dog quite often it calms them down and we don't want Jock to be any calmer for himself but also from a working perspective as well we we need a level of aggression from him which he has with the sheep but it's it's very gentle compared to some of the working dogs which has its advantages as well uh, so we have always kept jock entire and if, if it wasn't for that if he was a bit sort of hardier you know a bit harder natured we we would have done it in a heartbeat where you know we are responsible dog owners um but obviously with pip being a pup the the advice is that you let your puppy have a a heat before you before you um spay them or neuter them so we we decided that that we would do that and that's what we're going through just now but because of jock's nature i'm digressing here again i was a way off on a tangent um because of jock's nature he obviously he's interested i mean you have got to be interested but he if you call him away he just goes off and does his own thing he's not like constantly chasing her or crying about it or anything like that um we do separate them sometimes but if i'm if i'm just in the house and i'm not busy like you know just now i'm you know i'm very aware of what's going on around about me pip's not even in the room so it's okay uh we manage quite well with that but see it's only only a week or so now and it'll be over and when it comes into the sort of late summer we're assuming that that pip will be on roughly a six month cycle which is kind of normal for for dogs of the you know sort of collie size um so we will ha get her booked in and we will get her spayed because we are not going to breed any pups from her we don't want any more pups <laughs> i've had enough of puppies again for another while <laughs> um so yeah so we just have to just have to keep an eye on them be careful and obviously if we're doing anything where you know like the likes of when i go in the shower in the morning i segregate them they go into separate rooms and they get shot in while I'm in the while I'm in the shower. So it's just a bit of an inconvenience, <clears throat> but it's okay. It's just one of those things that you you know I have been dreading it though, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Once we got past the tiny puppy stage, I was like, oh no, the next thing's gonna be when she comes into season. <laughs> I've got all that to deal with as well. Um so but it's just all part and parcel of it. I say it's it's only their their cycle runs roughly over three weeks and she's actually only fertile for like a week of that and out of that week there's maybe only four days where she would potentially stand and let let jock do his business so you know we can deal with that that's okay that'll be fine <laughs> okay it's one of those things you just can't wait till it's over it's like oh when is this going to end <laughs> Uh, honestly don't see if see if you're thinking about getting a dog just don't <laughs> so, oh, that's not true i wouldn't change my dogs for the world but wow it's just you're like oh here we go again right i'll we'll pop pop see what we're going to pop in here mm. my next conundrum is trying to decide 
what I'm going to do with my hair for this wedding. Uh, you, you're all aware I have tons of hair and it's very wayward as well. My, my hair doesn't behave itself at any point and uh, I'm going to have to, I know I want to pin it up and I've been on Pinterest and you know I've done all that kind of bit and I can't, it needs to be something that I can do myself, like it needs to be a hairdo that I can execute by myself and I think that that's kind of where I'm struggling a little bit because I see my hair's quite wayward at the best of times and there's quite a lot of really nice intricate updos that you see on girls with really really long hair and everyone's like oh that'd look really good in your hair but these girls that that they use you know the models that they use for these updos their hair is usually poker straight and it's also quite fine because that's like the best type of hair for that kind of thing because it's easy to manage and it's easy to pin up the last time I had my hair done to go to a wedding, I had 167 Kirby grips or bobby pins in my hair to hold it up. And the lady that was doing it, she made me go outside, and it was very windy outside that day, and she made me go outside the front of the salon and shake my head violently in the wind to make sure that it wasn't going to come undone when, uh, you know, when I actually had it done on the day of the, the wedding. And let me tell you, I got some really weird looks from, <laughs> from people passing by. Here's this woman with like all this, you know, I was in jeans and like a, like a holy, you know, like checked shirt uh, th with this fabulous hairdo. And, and I'm stood there like shaking my head <laughs> side to side in the middle of the street in this like gale force wind. It was, I was very funny. Um, so yeah, I kind of I struggle a little bit with stuff like that because just the weight of my hair will pull out whatever it is because my hair is so thick and see it's it's quite wavy as well uh which uh, and people always say to me oh you've got lovely hair and I'm like yeah great thanks it's a pain in the ass <laughs> do you want it oh dear so that's it uh, I've still got my thinking cap on with that but my, my best friend, who was my bridesmaid at, at my own wedding, um, she did say to me that she'll come and help me and we'll try and find something that I'm going to be able to do on my own. So that should be okay, but I kind of need to get a wiggle on with it. <laughs> it's like time's ticking on. It's stuff like that. I think, see, just because I'm so tomboyish, like I, I, I don't bother. Most, most days I either have my hair like half pinned up, so like the top half's pinned up and the bottom part's loose. Or I have it all slung up in a ponytail or a bun. Sometimes I, I'll, I'll braid it, you know, I'll pleat it. Um, and that's about as far as I get with it. <laughs> I just, I, I'm too, I'm, honestly, I'm too busy to worry about things like that most of the time. And because, again, I've mentioned this before, because I work from home, I, I, it's not as if I'm out in public. And I know that sounds really sloppy and lazy and you shouldn't do your hair for anyone else's benefit. But honestly, the cows don't appreciate it. <laughs> they really don't. Um, so it's just not top of my priority list. And it's the same with makeup as well. And again, you'll have seen in videos, uh, sometimes I've got makeup on, sometimes I don't. And it just depends on what I'm doing and how I'm feeling. Sometimes I will put makeup on uh, to just to make myself feel feel a bit better. You know, sometimes if I'm feeling a bit kind of sluggish when I got up in the morning or a bit groggy or just feeling a bit crappy, sometimes it's nice to go for a shower and, you know, like do something with your hair and you know, put some makeup on because it makes you feel a little bit more human. Guys, I don't know if you can relate to this at all, but uh, yeah, it's, so I do do it sometimes, but just not all the time. But I'm not really, again, I've got quite sensitive skin. I have a lot of skin issues and I find that there's a lot of makeup that doesn't agree with my, my face. And it was actually something that a, a friend pointed out to me. She, she had watched a few of my videos just out of curiosity she's not really an arty person but she said to me she said in your introductions sometimes she says you touch your face a lot and it's usually my nose and I, I didn't realize I was doing it I must just do it automatically but it was when she said to me I went went back and looked at some of my videos and she's right and it's because I've got makeup on and the the makeup that I've got on is making my skin itchy so that's quite interesting I find it very difficult not to touch my face though uh, so again, I tend not to wear foundation uh, and plus foundation just wrecks my skin anyway. It's, yeah, it's, it's not, not, not great. So I'm also quite conscious of 
the the products themselves now this might sound a bit hypocritical because obviously i am a farmer and i am married to a farmer and we effectively rear cattle to eat but i am i'm, I'm actually very against animal testing for products so I do try to, you know, the, the cosmetics that I do have, few as they are, uh, it's very difficult to find ones that, that agree with my skin. But I try and keep, I try and get cruelty free products. Um, to me, there is a huge difference between rearing an animal in, in an environment that it's supposed to be in, which is obviously outside of grass and things like that, to eat and deliberately breeding animals just for vanity um i think those are two very very separate issues and some people in fact not some uh, there, there will be people that disagree with me and that's absolutely fine but that is my opinion um i don't agree with using animals for for vanity oh big tractor that was mr Gemma in his tractor <laughs> i don't know where he's going this morning don't know where he's off to I haven't really spoken to him much this morning. It's still quite early, so so yeah, that's it. That's something I feel quite strongly about. And see, people say to me sometimes that that's quite an odd point of view, considering you know my my lifestyle and what you know the 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 industry and the occupation kind of thing. But for me, they're two very different things. Um, if you want to test cosmetics, test them on humans. You know. <laughs> Anyway, I'm, I'm going to leave that subject alone because I don't want to start any horrendous debates and I don't want people getting hit up or, you know, that kind of thing. That's just that's just my opinion. Um, so anyway, so because of that, my my chosen or one of my preferred brands of cosmetics is um, Soap and Glory. They used to be an independent company and they've now been bought over by Boots. And as far as I'm aware, they are still cruelty free. Um so i, I kind of like their stuff my skin seems to accept it you know it will tolerate it a bit better which is which is always nice for me i've just realized that this little dude's a robot <laughs> i didn't even know he was there oh that's so funny we'll do this side the same color because this is obviously his other arm in here <laughs> yeah he looks really cool i like him i like him a lot he's fun Listen here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've been something exciting came in the mail the other day, and I've been um, I've been doing quite a lot of painting recently. I'm starting to enjoy it a little bit more. And I got a set of watercolour postcards. And for for the very few of you who have received a, a parcel from me, you will know that I like to I like to pop in just my, my little tiny watercolour paintings that I've done over the top of my, my practice washes. And uh, I've I've got these watercolour postcards now, so I'm gonna start doing those postcards just for my my packages that I send out um so that i think that's going to be quite fun there there's i found two types of watercolor postcards one's from dale or rowney and the other is strathmore so i'm going to try them both out and see you know which, which one i prefer because for me paper's quite a big part of um of the of watercolor and i found i got get on much better with some papers compared to others so i'm going to test them both out and see how we get on with that so that's going to be quite fun but see I, I, I do these practice washes anyway and I do them quite a lot and I use them to test out like different paint brushes because I'm still very much at the stage of finding my feet in terms of watercolour so there's a lot of experimenting going on and those little um those little postcards will be the perfect opportunity to for me to test things out and it gives me a few little paintings to to send out to you guys that that either win giveaways or buy things i'm not i can't say buy things that that take things from the the stash the color cave stash you know the the supplies so yeah that's it that's going to be kind of fun that's i'm going to try and do some of that over this next coming weekend i'm hoping by then that i will have all the videos filmed that i need filmed 
in advance. And then that just gives me a little bit of downtime. One of the things that's really been suffering, especially just now because I am trying to get ahead and film all these extra videos, is that I'm hardly doing any art for myself. Everything's for the channel. And uh, that's, and again, another one of the reasons why I want to give myself, like, hopefully a week. Just so that I can, you know, I can do do what I want to do for a wee while. Because it, you, you are, like, obviously, I mean, everyone knows I'm a busy person anyway because of just where I am and what I do and stuff. Which is absolutely fine. I'm not complaining about that at all. I like being busy. But uh, there, there just comes a point sometimes and something has to give. And what has happened is I am just not doing any art for myself at all. And uh, I kind of I kinda want to do some stuff on my own. So I'm hoping that in that last week, as long as I'm, I get myself organised in terms of everything for going away and the wedding and whatnot, then I can maybe spend a little bit of time doing something just for me. That would be nice. Not that I don't enjoy doing these kind of videos. Like I enjoy filming my videos, obviously, because if I didn't, I, I wouldn't still be doing it. But um, I think it's important to do something just for yourself sometimes and not have that pressure of, you know, making sure your camera's charged and making sure that you're in shot when you're doing whatever it is you're doing, all that kind of stuff. Because it, it is different, uh, you know, it's it's a different kind of feeling and a different kind of vibe when you're, when you're filming what you're doing. Um, so... Yeah. Tickle that. I'm I'm assuming that that's part of that that leaf here. If it wasn't, it is now. <laughs> Again, I'm just going down. I'm I'm blending in more with the the purple rather than going back to the blue. But I'm not overly. I'm not overly worried about blending these to be honest. It's see it's it's going a lot better, you know, the, the this sort of blending situation. It's going a lot better than than anticipated in terms of having to jump between, you know, your last set of colours and a new set of colours. So that's really good. Right, so there's two houses here, or two buildings. So I'm gonna make one, I'm just gonna block colour this one in here. Make it really dark because it's in at the back. Making sure I'm still in shot here. Yep, good. Okay, that's good. Happy with that. Um, we'll make our little feline friend this paler colour, I think. This lavender is really easy to blend because it's so light. You can, do you know what I mean? I'm really sort of encroaching on the, the, the kind of bluer area there. And it's just, it's just sinking in, which is really good. And then I think we'll use this dark one for here. Again, that, that's a nice transition. That's an easy transition from the, the blue into this purple. But again, this is more of a, a, a bluey purple, so that helps too. That makes it really easy. And I can start to darken it down a bit as well make it a bit heavier up here that's the thing I really like about po uh, I was going to say polychromos there no come on Gem I really like about Prismacolor pencils you can because they've got that sort of buttery texture to them you can just go in really heavy on a first layer and you know get some really vibrant block colour down uh, you don't have to sort of whittle away in layers and layers and layers um, I quite like that about them, especially when you're doing small areas like this. Sometimes it's just easier to press really hard and get that one layer down like that. And it's nice to have the, the sort of the luxury to do that. It's different when you're working in larger areas, I think. I don't know. You, you guys tell me what you think. I would be interested to hear what, what you feel about that. Um, right, I think we'll go... I, I kind of gravitate towards using the lighter colours for these sort of like cloud or like wispy type things. I think that's just a kind of natural, a natural reaction maybe, I don't know. My stomach's rumbling. <laughs> oh, there's a surprise, James, stomach's rumbling. I haven't, I haven't eaten anything today. I've had, um... I've had, what have I had? I've had a cup of tea. Surprise, surprise again. I'm, I'm such a creature of habit. I had a cup of tea when I got up, um, but I, I was kind of busy this morning out doing stuff. I was out and about, so 
Uh, it's, what time is it? It's half past nine now. And I still haven't had any breakfast. So that's probably why my stomach's rumbling. But I'll get something after I'm finished this. Half an hour to, to square the house up and sort of sort myself out. And then I get to start my own work. Happy days. <laughs> I've got quite a lot to do today as well. So... Yeah, I see it keeps me out of trouble. I, I like I like to be busy. I like to have things to do. One of the dangers of not only being self-employed but working from home as well. See if you're not busy and if you're like me and a bit of a pig, it is so easy just to go and open the fridge door because, you know, the kitchen's right there. And if you're not occupied, I, I do find myself like boredom eating sometimes on the very rare occasion that I've got, you know, not got a lot on. It's far too easy and it's something that I'm kind of struggling with because even if I take a break from work, the, but like the first instinct, I do, I'm like through in the kitchen and I'm like, oh, look, there's the fridge. <laughs> get out the fridge. For the love of God, women, get out the fridge. So it's something that I would say that's definitely, definitely a downside to working from home and being self-employed because you've got nobody telling you when to take a break or if you're allowed a break, you know is you you're telling yourself that and it's just so easy just when you stop what you're doing and take like five minutes out all of a sudden the fridge doors open and you're you've eaten half the contents of your fridge <laughs> i do think as well though that's why i drink a lot of tea during the day um rather than eating anything and when i have a cup of tea i don't take like a biscuit or a cookie or anything with it it's just a cup of tea and i think that's kind of like it might be like my kind of coping mechanism for that it's like don't eat anything just drink tea but yeah, that, that's something that's really difficult about being self-employed. The other thing that... I, I was having this conversation with Richard. Richard is the, the gentleman that I bought my, my new laptop from. And uh, I was having this conversation with him because he, he said to me, he said, um, oh, it must be great to work from home because you can do whatever you want. And there there is there are loads of upsides to it. And I, I love it. I mean, I really, I love working from home. It's great. But... What I was trying to explain to him was that for someone who works in an office, working from home, or in fact, someone that works in any workplace, the, the prospect of working from home has a certain novelty value to it. But when you're doing it every day, that novelty value doesn't last very long. You know, it's not because it becomes your workplace, basically. Um, so what I was saying to him was like, you still have to put yourself like in a work mode. And it, it's things like, you know, I could sit in my pyjamas if I wanted to and work and drink coffee. You know, that I could do that. But when I do that, I am not in a work mindset. Therefore, I am less productive and I'm also less likely to stay motivated to continue my work. So, you know, it's things like that, that if, you, if you're used to working in a, in a workplace, uh, you know, people don't really think about that. But... When, when I start work, I always have to have had a shower. I'm always washed and dressed. Sometimes makeup, sometimes not. Depends. Refer to previous conversation. Um, so, but I, I do put myself into a work mode. Because if you don't, it is very, very easy to slide into bad habits. And when you are self-employed, you have to be self-motivated. You absolutely have to. And, that, and by sort of doing that and putting yourself into that sort of right well this is like my work mode it really helps you to stay productive and stay motivated and not go and eat the contents of your fridge or play the xbox or sit on the internet watching cat videos or what you know there's there's quite a lot to it and it's just it's not as easy as people think and it's not it's not like a holiday <laughs> Because you you know you do get to that stage where your your home is now your workplace. The other downside to it is it's very difficult to get away from your work, um, and I find it especially because this is the cave. You know I I, I work in this room, but this is also my my YouTubing room, and uh, it it can be it can be very very difficult to get away from things because you're at home all day. Thankfully for me, and I mean, I'm lucky in that sense because I live on a farm. I just have to step out the door and I can take myself off somewhere with the dogs or just on my own. You know, I can. I've got breathing space. for. But for people who work from home that live in a, a more sort of built up area, sometimes you feel as if you've got nowhere to go. You feel really trapped. And again, it's something that people don't often, you know, won't necessarily think about. 
Um, so you know, it, I mean, it has its advantages, and it, but it has its disadvantages too. And it's not like like being on holiday. People think like, oh, it's great, you can do whatever you want. Well, yes, you can, but there's consequences to that. So it's about finding balance. But I, I very much enjoy it. Um, and it also means as well that my my dogs are, you know, they have someone here. Um, so we don't have to worry about doggy sitters or doggy walkers or anything like that as well. So it's it's pretty cool for that. I like it. It's good. I mean, I still I still have someone to answer to. The company that I work for, I have a, I'm like a subcontractor for them. So I still have a point of contact um, that sets deadlines and asks me to do things. So I still have to answer to someone, but it's just not in the same on the same level as if I was an employee at a company. So I basically tell her my availability and what I think I can achieve um, based on, you know, the information she gives me about whatever it is I'm working on. And I will sort of set out some parameters. And those are flexible. Um, but it's, it's a really good way to work. Right, once again, I have no idea what is going on up here. Like, none whatsoever. No idea. I think what I'll do is, I'm going to make these, I'm back to these sort of stripey bits. I'm going to block colour that stripey bit in there, like this. Just block colour it, get that down on there. And these sort of bitty bits and coming in here, I'm going to make pink. Because I've only got this tiny triangle of pink here. So I'll just sort of... I, I don't know what that noise was, but... Yeah, there's just, there's lots of like kind of swooshy lines going on in behind things here. Man, it's so complicated. This little guy. It looks like a little fireball, this guy. make him darker down here just put an extra layer down at the bottom part of him and then I need to give him some eyes I need to give him some eyes where's my pen yay <laughs> this little teddy bear guy as well I might as well do this one while I'm at it there we go oh no there's another one do okay good i'm just looking at the timer here and uh, this is i'm just going to finish this section that's probably going to take us to about an hour and 10 minutes which is plenty better get a wiggle on here right i'll do these petals here it's funny how some sections have been a lot quicker than others even though the surface area that they cover isn't necessarily uh, proportionate uh, and I think it's just how many fiddly bits <laughs> there are in each. This is, you know, like this has got really extra fiddly bits in it. There you go now. I've just blended that purple into that blue and you would never know it was two different pencils. Oh, yeah. Been good at this. <laughs> Anybody would think I'd done this before. <laughs> this little birdie guy here. I don't know what I'm going to do shading wise here, so I'm just going to get a, a sort of light layer going on first. That's like the line. Mm. I think I might make it a bit darker around these edges and just lighten it up as I go. We'll try that. Try that. Yeah, there we go. That looks good. I'll do. <laughs> See, the nice thing is you, you don't have to be fussy about, about what's going on here. It's really good. I like it a lot. Makes for happy colouring. Just the, the odd moment of confusion, you know, where, <laughs> where you're not, not quite catching what's going on. This little guy's so cute. I like him a lot. Oh, now... I think this part in here belongs to this. I think that's the, maybe the same cloud. I'll make that the same colour. That'll do. Yeah, because it looks as if he's hiding in the clouds. <laughs> oh, this little guy. He's got quite a friendly little face on him. Look at his little smile. Oh. I wonder if Kirby's actually got a name for these creatures or whether they're just sort of anonymous something or others. I would be really interested to find that out. 
I don't think he's the type of person that uh, responds to random emails like that. Um, but maybe I should maybe I should email him and ask. Excuse me, Mister Rosanna's. Know how you've got these little things in your coloring book? Well, <laughs> I want to know. Uh, I don't know what it is, but I like things to have names. Like I, I like to be able to identify things. And there's quite often there's quite a few coloring pages we've done where I have given things names. Because I just I just feel like everyone should have a name. Like so everyone should have an identity. It doesn't matter whether you're a, a funny little dude in a colouring book or otherwise. Like why not? It's funny how you get these things into your head, but <laughs> I mean I really do. I don't I don't know why I do it either. When we did Cave Miss last year, I <laughs> I had I was drawing a reindeer and then it was gonna be coloured in like the next day, like the next video. And uh, I called it Nancy. <laughs> Like, I don't know any reindeer called Nancy, but there's one called Nancy now. It's like, yeah, she looks like a Nancy. <laughs> oh, God. It's just my thing. <laughs> it's just one of those things that I do. Oh, dear. You lot must think I'm absolutely bloody start craving bonkers. Rattling on about naming reindeer and... I'm a, I'm still really surprised at the number of people that just enjoy listening to me talk because nine times out of ten, especially when I'm doing videos like this and I'm not really explaining a lot of the technique, I am literally just rambling. Like not, it's not even like intellectual conversations most of the time. I'm just rattling on, and uh, I, I'm just I find it really funny that people like that kind of stuff because as a especially as a younger child, my mother was forever telling me to shut up. It's like Gemma, stop talking. Gemma, pl please, just like, can you just stop talking for like half an hour? So I'm really glad that it's uh, a skill that I can put to good use, <laughs> as I finally found my calling in life. I actually can't help it though. Like I really, really can't help it. I've I have said this before, maybe some time ago, but I just can't. I try a lot harder now like, in social situations. I am very aware of the fact that I'm a person that talks a lot and I make that conscious effort to shut my mouth and not be that annoying person that just takes over the entire conversation because there's nothing worse. Uh, I, I don't like doing that, but I am very awkward in social situations and it's because of that, because I know, and I don't know maybe whether part of it's an anxious thing, but like I feel my mouth running away from me and I'm just talking and talking, but it's more nerves. It's not that I'm wanting to be like oh look at me blah 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 I'm talking about x y or z it's 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 really strange it's really difficult to explain um I don't, I don't know but yeah that's just the way that's just the way I am I'm afraid but see, I do I do try really really hard and sometimes if I'm with someone who knows me well like you know if I'm with like maybe like my parents or Mr Gem or my best friend the, you know they know that they can say to me look you need to kind of like shut up for a little while and I'm that I'm not going to be offended by it and they're they're well meaning um so I'm a bit more comfortable in those kind of situations because I know that if I if I'm not aware of it I've got someone that will tell me it's time to time to be quiet for a little quiet time <laughs> but see it's it's nice to be able to do stuff like this and people actually like it and appreciate it that's that's quite a nice feeling because it's I've always seen it as a negative part of who I am and uh, but see it's just built in it's just it's a bit like the the waking up early thing I can't help that it's just I've, I've done it since I was a really small child it's just who I am and I can't I couldn't lie in if you you know if my life depended on it and if somebody said to me we'll give you a million pounds if you sleep till 11 o'clock in the morning I would I would still be destitute because I can't do it physically cannot do it I'm awake that's it I'm up I've got to get going I like to be busy you know I've just said that already today twice but I do, I have to be doing things. I like to be productive and yeah, that is that is just the way that it is. So there's some things that we can't help, but I think if you're aware of them and you not necessarily try to not do them, but if, if you're aware of them and you're conscious of them, you can control things that you don't like about yourself a bit better. Uh, but that's just, um, it's a difficult one. It's a really difficult one. But I just, I don't, I don't like the thought of people. I've just realised that you guys missed that whole section there because I was rambling and not paying attention. 
I'm sorry. I just used the same colour over that whole purple, you know, like lighter purple section. Um, yeah, I just, I hate the thought of people thinking that I, like, I like the sound of my own voice and that I just want to talk about myself or whatever. I'm really not like that at all, but I'm aware that because I am a person that talks a lot, it can quite often come across like that. And uh, that's, you know, I'm, I'm like the complete opposite of that. <laughs> so... But I do try and make sure that I, you know, like I consciously ask people open-ended questions so that I am not talking all the time. And I, I, I do do that. I mean, I really consciously do that. And it's to stop me talking because I have to listen to the other person. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I don't know. It's very difficult being uncomfortable about a quality of yourself that you actually like can't control it's, it's really really difficult right now in the back here use that one i don't really want to go to this lilac again i think i'll go back to parma violet this there's a lot of like bitty stuff going on down here again all the bitty, bitty, bitty bits and pop this in here Again, I'm just going to block colour that part because there's I, I don't even know what's going on in behind there. I do not know what's going on in behind there and I am not really all that interested. I think that's kind of like one of these swishy, cloudy things down in here. I'll take a guess that that's what it is. And that might be going down in there as well. And this looks like it's part of our bird. Duck. Goose. Dodo? <laughs> no, it's not a dodo. I'm very familiar with dodos. I learned a lot about dodos when I was in Mauritius because that's uh, that's their that's their bird, the dodo. There we go. I think that'll do. All right, let's have a zoom out. Da -da. Oh yeah, it's looking pretty good. Okay, dokie. So the next video will obviously be our last video. And what we're going to do next time is we will do our pink sections, which are just these little corners here. But we're also going to go back and we'll fill in these sort of gappy background parts because they do stand out a lot more because we have everything else coloured. So we will just sort of pick through and fill in anything there that we need to fill in. And then we can write our names in the middle and we will be done. I'm really pleased with how this is turning out. Uh, it's, it's actually turning out a lot better than I thought it would, which is always nice. And I'm really glad that lots of you have said it's something that you're going to try. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and my rambling as per usual. And we shall see you next time where we're going to finish this page off. Have a good day, everyone, and we'll see you later.